Well, good morning, everybody. Hope y'all are warm and your lights are still on. Um, it's getting pretty rough over here. Uh, the wind has been blowing all morning and uh, it's cold. I think it's like 18 degrees and the wind chills even colder. So uh, I'm gonna have a Sunday morning devotion here. Not gonna keep you long. Um, and uh, just enjoy your day uh, with your family. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. All right, looks like we're getting some people logging in. Um, thank you for being here. We'll be in Isaiah chapter number 55. Isaiah chapter number 55. And I'll give you time to turn there. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, feel free to message the page at the church or me personally, and I'll be sure to help you pray about those. And uh, we're praying for all those, um, our brothers and sisters at other churches, pastor friends that are doing the same today, either um, live streaming um, from the church or their homes uh, and that have canceled. Um, I, I honestly don't know of one church uh, in our area that's having services. There may be, but I personally do not know of any. Um, so just, uh, we always try to do that with a prayerful, uh, you know, thought, um, you know, everyone's safety and these roads are awful this morning. So, uh, we made the decision to go live stream again. This is more of a devotion than a message. So we'll not be long on here and, uh, we'll be in Isaiah chapter 55 and, uh, thank you all for taking the time. Uh, to tune in this morning. So we'll begin reading in the 10th verse. The Bible says, the prophet Isaiah, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The chapter closes in verse 13. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege this morning um, to, to gather by way of internet. Lord, we thank you for that capability. We thank you for technology. And Father, we ask you, God, that you'd bless the, the hearer this morning, that you'd bless uh, me, Lord, with liberty and clarity and, and clarity of speech. And Father, as we look into your word for encouragement in these days, and God, we just ask you to bless each and every listener, God, in their home, keep them safe, those that are out working today, uh, Lord, whether it be the, the linemen or the, the ones that plow or the first responders or the medical staff in our hospitals, Lord, we pray that you would bless them today, uh, not only uh, in their duties, but Lord, in their travels. And Lord, we pray most of all that if someone be listening to this um, video, Lord, whether it be right now or in the days to come, Lord, if they know not Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord, we ask that today, be that day of salvation, for now is the accepted time, the Bible says. Lord, we ask you to bless uh, our communities, our commonwealth, and our country. Lord, as we pray for our leaders, Lord, uh, that they would make godly decisions on our behalf. And Lord, we thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross uh, at Calvary for the remission of our sins, for there is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. And we thank you for that. Now bless this devotion, and we'll thank you in Christ's name. Amen. So I want to give you three things this morning that um, the, the, the word snow, I think it's quite convenient and, and, uh, and, and readily uh, 
sufficient that we talk about snow. I mean, what better day to talk about it than in the middle of a blizzard, so to speak. But I want to give you three things that the snow does, and this is coming right out of the context of Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. First of all, the snow covers. The snow covers. Uh, we see just yesterday evening that we, we seen the grass was visible. We seen that uh, the surroundings, um, whatever they may be, homes, um, cars, you know, things of everyday life, they were very visible to the human eye. And this morning we're seeing that the snow covers. And so does the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ covers. You see everything that we seen yesterday, winter, is uh, it's it's a time of everything is kind of dead. It's brown, gray. Uh, it's kind of dreary and gloomy, uh, and uh, it's not very um, pretty to look at like it is in the summer and spring and fall. Um, but the snow changes all that. Uh, we were going to a, a, a town nearby yesterday, me and my family, and we were looking at the mountain tops, and it had done begin to get frosty on top of those long before this snow ever got here. And so uh, we were talking about that, but the snow covers. And so does the blood of Christ. It covers every iniquity. It covers every transgression. It covers every sin that you and I have ever done or will do. It covers uh, in completion. It leaves no leaf uh, unturned. It leaves no uh, spot uh unblotted, it covers 100%. The snow makes everything beautiful. The snow, um, when it covers, it, it, it puts a blanket over it all, and all we see is the pure white. And we can have peace in knowing this day that when the blood has been applied to our lives, that Jesus Christ, through uh, the work of Calvary, has covered our every blemish. It makes something that's drear, something that's gloomy, something that is sin sick, such as you and I. It covers us and the multitude of our sins in the blood of Jesus Christ. When God the Father looks at us, he doesn't see the gloominess and the despair. He simply sees the blood of his son that has been applied to each of us by faith through, uh, by grace through faith. And so this morning, I just want to remind you uh, that the blood, as snow does, it covers and it makes everything beautiful. The old hymn uh, there says, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins that sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stains. Uh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You see, it's the blood, the blood, the blood that covers. And when we get to heaven... Uh, someday soon, I believe, that is going to be uh, our entry. It's going to be our ticket into is the blood of Jesus Christ because it has covered our sins. It has washed them away. It has taken the deadness of man and created and quickened us in the spirit to eternal life. So first of all, if you're taking notes this morning, the blood covers, as does the snow. The snow, it produces. You see, for, for some years now, I was just talking to somebody yesterday. Uh, growing up, we used to experience winters like we're having this morning, not just a couple times throughout the winter, but it seems like it was a pretty well constant thing to wake up and there'd be snow on the ground or winter weather or whatever you want to call it. But in the last few years, it seems that it's not been so much. I mean, many of us live through, uh, some of you, the the great uh, winter of 1960. I hear about that all the time. And then we had one as I was growing up, the blizzard of 93, where I think we got 30 plus inches of snow. And so uh, we're seeing a little bit of that today, maybe not 30 inches, I hope not anyway, but um, we see that it produces. Once this snow has fallen, it goes down deep into the soil of earth and it produces a chemical that we know as nitrogen. And nitrogen makes uh, uh, the, the spring growth vibrant. It, 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 it in, just engulfs the soil with nitrogen, which causes great growth. 
and it uh, and then in the spring we see the results of that winter snow. Um, I know a lot of old old farmers, so to speak, old time farmers do a lot of plowing in the the month of February uh, because it's it's the right time. It it works the ground, uh, so to speak. They'll plow it and overturn it, and then they'll disc that in come spring, and it just makes that ground um, more presentable uh, to the seed. But it produces, and so does the Word of God in our life. It produces something down deep in us. Uh, the, the text says that, my, that so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, that it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. You see, the word of God produces. If, if we're blood-bought, if we're a child of God, then our hope is in the word of God. It is our guide. It is our constant. It is what we can look to in times of need. It is in times of, of good, in times of bad, in times of trouble, trial, uh, heartache, pain. It is our, uh, it's our only hope in this walk of life is the word of God. We see that people will let us down, that churches, that pastors, uh, we're all faulty because we're human. But the word of God, because it is from Christ Jesus, it is Christ Jesus, never fails. And so when we read his word and pray the promises of his word, it produces in us fruit. And, and over there in the gospel account, I believe of Matthew, time and time again, Christ Jesus says that, that they'll know us by our fruits. They'll, uh, they'll be able to know that we're his disciples if we do these things, love one another, uh, and so on and, and so forth. So it produces uh, it's like the little girl once said that uh, that um, got saved in uh, a Sunday school class. The next week, she had pondered on the thought of salvation all week long, and so she go she went back the next week and she asked her teacher. She said, "So let me let me just get this straight, so 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 I don't tell it wrong." And and of course, the Sunday school teacher listened to this you know, young little girl. And she said, "So you're telling me that that when we're saved, that a God, the God of heaven." Uh, that that's came in Christ Jesus, robed in flesh, died on a cross, rose again, and has left us with the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And he's a God that big that he can make all this, the planets, the stars, all of this, and then he can save our souls from um, the devil's hell. If he's that big and I'm this small, shouldn't he be poking out somewhere? sticking out somewhere. You see, if the word of God is forever settled in our heart, we as Christians will bear fruit. And our fruit is that of the Holy Spirit. You and I are fruit bearers. We are producers. Just as the snow produces nitrogen, which then in return in the spring uh, helps produce the seed, the fruit, the bearing, uh, we're to do the same. And, and that is how people will know us. We don't have to go about bragging uh, and boasting that we are Christians. We'll do it in humility and humbleness that Christ has wrought a work in us. Paul said the old creature uh, has been put away and the new creature's put on. Behold, all things become new, Christ says uh, in Revelation. And so you and I have to do uh, the producing. How do we produce it? By the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If we'll let him work in our lives, we'll manifest wonderful fruit. Now, if we try to do it on our own, if we try to give, uh, you know, put in our two cents worth or our opinion, uh, we're going to fail. But if we'll let God do what he is, uh, has, has given us uh, and let him work and him move in our lives, then it will produce something of great effect. And so as the snow produces so should you and I as Christians. Are we going to mess up? Yes. Are we going to fail? Most certainly. Uh, why? Because we're still carnal. We're still of the uh, Adam nature. There is still this flesh. The spirit and soul are made perfect in Christ. And when we, uh, when we uh, are raptured out, this, this body will become glorified. And at that moment, it'll be 100% perfect. But as we walk this life, 
uh, we're going to have some flaws. And, and if you're listening and you have no flaws, please call me later. I'd like to talk to you because I've not met one individual that doesn't have some flaws about them, including many myself. So we find that the snow covers and the snow produces. Now I'd like to give you the last one, it supplies. Uh, the Bible says uh, this, for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And notice it says, instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. It didn't say possibly, it said shall not. So we find it covers, it produces, and now it supplies. You see, not only when that snow melts does it produce nitrogen in the ground, it also uh, produces runoff, which runs to the nearest ditch, the nearest creek, the nearest waterway, and then the, that waterway goes to a, a river, and then that river goes to a lake, and then those lakes filter at some point out into the great vast oceans of the earth. So it supplies. Well, what does it supply? Not only does it supply moisture uh, for the product, the producing, the seed, it produces a, a, a refreshment to the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air. And to you and I, it fills the well springs uh, that supply us with that most needed uh, thing that we call water. Um, you can't go, uh, you can go a few days, uh, a week or so without food, but you can't go but just a couple of few days without water. So we find that the snow supplies. And so does the Spirit of God. It supplies our every, uh, he supplies our every need. Uh, we find that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. All I shall supply all your needs according to my riches, uh, which are in glory. I'm glad to know that it supplies uh, refreshment. It supplies, uh, you know, proper for proper growth through its moisture. And then we get to enjoy it. I don't know about you, but I like, uh, sitting on a, a river bank or, or, or by the oceans, um, you know, going out on a boat uh, uh, on a lake or in the ocean, sitting at the seashore, we can enjoy what God's word himself and the spirit supplies to you and I. We should enjoy what it supplies. We have nothing outside of the work of the Holy Spirit of God. Everything that you and I have, from the clothes on our back to the houses we live in, to the cars we drive, to the jobs we have, God has supplied every need. And so today, as you look out, and you, I, I hope you enjoy the snow. I'm a, I'm a summertime uh, person myself, but I do enjoy watching the snow from time to time. I hope that you look at it maybe a little differently uh, this morning. I, I pray that you realize that as the snow covers, so does the blood of Christ. And I hope that when you look out, you see that there's something that's happening down inside underneath that blanket of snow, and it's producing something that will soon produce good fruit. And then lastly, I hope as you look out this morning that you will see as the snow does to the earth, that that the Spirit and the Son of Man, Jesus Christ our Savior, supplies. I, I don't know of one person that uh, is blood washed, uh, that, that they are going through heartaches, they're going through um, you know, circumstances, but they're still being supplied with love. And the Bible says that we can have joy and peace and it shall go forth and the mountains and hills shall break forth. And it said that even the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I'll never forget the great Billy Kelly said the day or the night that he got saved in a, in a big auditorium in Knoxville, Tennessee, way back when, that he said it was like when he walked outside that the trees were clapping their hands saying, we're glad you're saved. You see, God speaks to us through his creation. He speaks to, it, uh, to our hearts if we'll just take the time and listen. So this morning, uh, I just want to give you this simple thought. When you look at that snow, relate it to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, 
the blood that cleanses us from all sin, that it has covered us, that it is producing us in us a, a wonderful fruit that will come to fruition uh, at some point in the near future, and that it always supplies. If you're having a hard time today with whatever it is, whether it's somebody in your family that's sick, whether it's you know finances, spiritual things, physical things, whatever, get in this book and uh, just search out the promises of God. There's thousands. And pray those. And may God bless your day. We'll close in a word of prayer. May you and your family be blessed this very day. Father, we thank you for the privilege it is, uh, Lord, just to break the bread of life. Lord, uh, to have it at our disposal. Lord, for every hour of every minute of every day. And God, we thank you for the help that it gives, the hope that it brings, and the joy that we can have in serving you. Father, we pray that you'd bless every listener. God, that is tuned into this broadcast, bless all the other men of God in churches who are doing the same this morning that's just uh, lifting up the name of Jesus. And may you get the honor and glory of it all. May no man glory in your sight, uh, as the Bible says, but only you. We'll thank you, we'll praise you, keep us safe, and bring us back to your house at the next appointed time. God bless in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful day.